Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.D. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luke of Parrot, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. Batman, my favorite character. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. <laughs> right off the bat. Ah, I, oh, always, always. All right, kids, welcome back to another episode, not, not just any other episode of We Are the Night, the Batman podcast, but the first one for September. That's right. Both Hellfire's away. Chaos can ensue. <laughs> so, yes, you know me. I am Phil. But joining me for the whole month of September here on the show, we have Justin the Owl Osgood. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks, Phil. And thank you for asking me to join you in Lilith's absence. It's a great pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah. Especially when, uh, yeah, I, I know I know your love of the uh, Alan Grant, Norm Brayfogle uh, Batman mm. story. So, yes, that's what we'll be covering all month of September, kids. Uh, Grant and Brayfogle, which we kind of planned not too long before, but then, you know, then we lost Alan Grant, and it was just like, well. Yeah, like I right mean, after, I think a couple of weeks after we discussed yeah. the list, actually. It happened, mm-hmm. yeah. so. so this will be our little tribute to both of them. Yeah, September, yeah. Yeah. All right, so before we get into the issues, I believe you said, isn't this when you first, like, wasn't it during the Grand Brave Fogel run when you started reading? Yeah, that was, I. my very first Batman issue was actually um, a Doug Mensch issue. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, when I, when I first started actually regularly reading and collecting Batman on a fairly regular basis, it was during this era when when uh, Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle were doing it. And then they switched over. I think they switched over to back and forth a couple times from title to title. But yeah, when it, wherever they went, I followed them because I, I loved the two of them together. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's around the time. Yeah, I started reading. It was it was a little ahead of this. It was around Detective 600. But yeah, they like mm. I think it was like 601 or so. Yeah, they were on mm. the book. And oh, yeah, nice. I instantly fell in love with this team. Yeah. 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 I think it was an 89. Yeah. I mean, 89 was a great year. I mean, you got the movie and then you had, yeah, Grant and Brave Fogel on a book. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow. I think that was also the year of the Mud Pack, too, wasn't it? 89? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. I love that. Yeah. That one really got me. I know. Yeah. That was one of my first stories. And I, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's so many of them, but they're like, yeah, it's just like, yeah, Clayface, too. We, nah, killed him off. <laughs> Yeah, never brought him back. Yeah, he's just a lump sitting in a corner with a with a spoon propping him up. <laughs> well, again, you give Clayface one, hit, you know, basically his powers and stuff, and it's just like, well, I guess we don't need him. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so great. Uh, all right, so all right, shall we begin these issues? Yes, the introduction Wait. of a very special villain. Yes, not only kids. Oh. I mean, this is a lot of introductory here because not mm. only is this the yes, the first or the first appearance of ventriloquist and Scarface, but also the first, I believe, the beginning of uh, Bra- uh, Grant and Brave Fogel's run on mm-hmm. Batman. So, yeah, yeah, with uh, John Wagner, yes, as well. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he left the title maybe within that year. Yeah, it was just Al- Alan Grant doing the writing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say within like yeah six months to a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. So yeah, we're starting with Bat- oh, Batman Detective Comics five eighty three from February nineteen eighty eight. Fever. <laughs> fever. Got the thief <laughs> oh, in the morning. <laughs> uh, that's right, kids. <laughs> we're sick. <laughs> What? Am I supposed to get my medicine soon? <laughs> Scream it! <laughs> <laughs> I got a fever and the only, the, only cure, the only cure is more cowbell. More cowbell. Hit that cowbell. 
All right, so yeah, Fever, right? Like we said, writers John Wagner and Alan Grant, penciler Norm Bravefogel, anchor Kim DeMalder, colorist Adrian Roy, letterer Todd Klein, and editor, of course, Denny O'Neill. Yes. All right, so... A new designer drug called Fever, get it kids, floods the streets of Gotham City, inducing many of the city's teens and preteens to fits of homicidal rage. Yeah, this was, um, I was just like, oh crap. When they were like, oh yeah, it's like nine and ten year olds taking this stuff. I'm like, oh god, my son's nine. I'm like, I, oh. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, were going, they were going nuts too with this stuff. I know, you know, that one kid in the beginning, he's like, I am the fever god. <laughs> Trying to sacrifice a poor little cat. It's like, come on, no, no. What that cat ever do to you? I know. It's like, it's like uh, a certain friend of ours. You know, it's like if he had like too much uh, Mountain Dew. Where's the <laughs> Joker nugget? <laughs> Wild like an animal. Exactly. Wild <laughs> like an animal. Rub that one in. I gotta rub that one in. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. You're all gonna get it. That's <laughs> September. Uh, when Batman sees a group of juvenile fever addicts kill an old security guard in cold blood, he takes a personal interest in stopping the drug's uh, proliferation. Soon after, Batman raids the fever pushers' headquarters and forces the pushers to give him the name of their top of their supplier, Scarface. I mean, that's a pretty cool scene when you know the cops like, "Oh yeah, we know where they're at. We you know the building's basically a fortress. You know, Batman mm. so Batman has to break in." <laughs> I love that. I I love too how the these ki- these kids killed that security guard by like burning his beard off. I know. They just pushed that that torch into his face, and then all of a sudden he's dead. It's like, ooh, was his his beard connected to his life force or? I well, like I that. guess you know it sets his whole head on fire. You know? Well, yeah, I suppose, yeah. But it's like it's like would hair go up that quickly or what? I don't know. Was this was this guy like drinking on the job or something? You know, maybe, a, yeah. Like, maybe he had a flask in his the... pocket or something. <laughs> there was like alcohol and of you know all over that beard. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You're probably right. This is Gotham. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a second. Uh... Yeah, they just told. <laughs> Were you tricky on the job? You said to filthy mouth. Uh, she'll be here with us in spirit the whole month. As it should be. As it should be. Don't pull it out unless you're going to use it. That's for guns and penises. <sighs> Now you see why it takes so many of you to replace her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. I was kind of pulling up the uh, issue also. All right. Unbeknownst to Batman, Scarface is actually a wooden puppet operated by a shady nightclub owner known only as the ventriloquist, who is seemingly a harmless milk toast. Not a milk sop, a milk toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to be confused with Thunderbolt Ross. No but channels his criminal instincts through an alternate per- personality that lives inside Scarface. Unaware that he is now Batman's latest target, Scarface spends the night shooting one incompetent lackey dead and sending another to Tijuana on a deadly drug run. <sighs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is something. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of the fight with the where the where Batman flushes that one dude face in the toilet? I know when he breaks into the drug dealer's oh, yeah building. I'm like, oh my god, he gave him a swirly. Oh, my. <laughs> that's the only time that Batman ever gave somebody a swirly. <laughs> it's great though. I know. I'm like, what's he gonna do? Then, you know, the next guy's right away is gonna give him a wedgie or something. <laughs> An atomic wedgie. Oh yeah, get it right <laughs> over that head. And um, and again, this is like uh, Norm Bravefogel's first issue on art. So, what do you think about his art? I I loved it. I mean, you can really see really his style right from the very beginning. Mm. It's it's um, I I read some of his stuff that he did before this on a on a, a first comic title called Whisper, and you could definitely see his style then. But it was very early on, but 
you can see that he was, you know, this was his, he wanted to really make his mark on Batman oh, right yeah. off the bat. And he definitely did. Yeah. It's so great. So very stark and moody. And the colors are really great in this too. The colors look excellent in this one. Oh yeah. But yeah, anytime like you, anyone says anything about Batman, you know, like a shot at like Batman standing in shadow, like that's what immediately pops up is like a brave Vogel, like, mm. you know, art to it's me. Like the, yeah, that definitive classic yeah. image of the shadows and the, and the cape kind of flowing. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's definitely him, his art, but it almost seemed to me too that it's like in some shots in this issue and the next, like some of his art. I don't know if he like defined it more later on, but in some shots it almost looked like a more like a more refined, better Todd McFarlane almost. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah, it's with unique, the cape yeah. the, the cape being less dramatic and less McFarlane y. Yeah. Yeah, because this was right around the time that McFarlane left, right? I think yeah, because what was he? He was on uh year two. That was like around year two. Like, 10 issues or so, or so ago or not even so yeah so he had yeah mcfarland had just left a couple months ago yeah and I, I can see where they wanted to make it different a much different style but still keep a little bit of continuity thematically so yeah you still have that billowing cape that's all over the place but <laughs> it's a little bit more in control than with todd <laughs> Well, yeah, I can't cover a football field, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Goodyear blimp with the, the big cape trailing behind it. <laughs> Me and Lil for saying, did you see? I guess uh, McFarlane put out like a fa like a like a Batman Year Two figure, and I mean, it's like this, <laughs> like this long, and most of that's cape. You need a whole display case just for the cape. I, oh yeah, we're like, oh, we got, <laughs> yeah. oh, we were both saying, oh, we got to get it just for, you know, just it's so ridiculous, but you have to have, you know, you have to have it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Which again, I think he was just warming up for Spawn. Mm, absolutely, Which the again, cape that lives again makes sense there. Yeah, it's a living thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I mean, not a ton going on here, but still a good issue. I mean, a good first. Yeah outing i like the thing with the fever drug too that was a cool angle on it i wonder if that ever came back in any later issues fever i don't think so but yeah i don't remember hearing that but yeah but yeah that's cool to... yeah you you do you you saw that every once in a while these random drugs pop up in these random designer drugs pop up in detective comics that these these slimy crime lords were cooking up in their warehouse oh yeah yeah i again i mean i guess they is he, i guess the whole grant brave fogel thing it's like they wanted to bring their a game to detective because you know it's like this it was the second batman book so mm -hmm. but yeah i know i know when i started i'm like i was just as into detective as i was into the main batman book yeah me too if not more so mm-hmm Sometimes, sometimes the stories I liked more. Oh yeah, and I think in Detective Comics, maybe I'm wrong about this, but there were a lot more one and done issues where it was just a self-contained story in one issue. I think in over in Batman, there were a lot more multiple issue story arcs going on. Yeah, maybe I'd say I'm at least wrong. yeah, like two to three issue arcs at least. Yeah, and again, I think they were like willing to like let them experiment a little more too over in the in, here in Detective. Mm, definitely. Like, like i think like grant did some but then some of the uh writers after him too would experiment with like you know some supernatural stuff and mm -hmm. which was interesting again <laughs> you could you could drop batman in the pretty much almost any situation and he like you know it works oh yeah you know yeah, supernatural definitely. stuff you know so batman yeah. my favorite character <laughs> Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. <laughs> we love you, Ray. I know. If he's listening. He, I, I guarantee you he never thought that was going to come back and bite him. In the because <laughs> that, was that on Trapped in the World? Or Trapped in a World? It was on something, I think. I think it, so. It, I think it was, because I, I, I like messaged Noel as soon as I heard it. I'm like, I need your, I need your audio. <laughs> <laughs> that is a treasure. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, bu -bu 
Let me look at the trivia here. Should we move on to the next one? Um, uh... Yeah, like you said, not a lot happened in 583. It was it was a really a lot of setup for the yeah. fall, for the next issue and the introduction of Scarface and the ventriloquist, which was cool. I, I loved the the part where he just gunned down that guy in cold blood. <laughs> what about what about uh, his little speech impediment? It's <laughs> Yeah, where he's pronouncing everything with a B with a G. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's fantastic. The one guy's like, what? What's it? What? Oh, okay. <laughs> what did <Yeah>. you say? <laughs> but I didn't realize they said, yeah, they, they never revealed uh, Ventriloquist's real name until Robin Annual One. So that was probably like 91, oh. 92. Yeah. Yeah. That was a while. Oh, wow. No kidding. Well, again, I mean, not like he was—I guess not like he was around every month, you know. Because after this, he gets locked up, and for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think when did he appear again after this? It was once, and then I think in Nightfall. I know he had an appearance like maybe a year before Nightfall. I mean, we'll get—we're going to get to that towards the end of this mm -hmm. month. So, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah so it was he like, didn't yeah. appear a whole lot. Yeah. yeah, they kept him in jail for a while. Yeah. All right, so let's jump to the next one. Detective Comics 584 from March 1988. Fe fever Break. Yeah. Fever and Fever Break. With a great cover, too. I love that cover. Yeah, yeah. Although I like the The other cover is pretty good, too. Mm, yeah, they're both great. Mike, Yeah, Mike Mignola did the other one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like really good stuff. Uh, I believe this is the same team, creative team here. Uh, uh, yep. All right. So on on Scarface's orders, William Henry Fat Man Cherry <laughs> arrives in Teal. <laughs> so we go, Fat Man and Fat Man. <laughs> Uh, who's sweating? Who's sweating mercilessly at the onset of this issue? So did Scar guy. so did Scarface give him that nickname? I'm like, dude, dude is not subtle on nicknames. I'm gonna call you Batman. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Scarface. Uh, arrives at Tijuana to smuggle the latest shipment of fever into the United States. Unbeknownst to him, the fever manufacturers in Tijuana have orders to kill him and use his corpse as a mule to sneak the fever past customs. Cherry realizes this far too late and is gar garroted seconds later. <laughs> Oops. So, I when it, I mean, we're going to get to it, but when he goes through customs, it's like, it looks like they search him, but I'm like, I'm, I'm, I guess they only do a cavity search. I so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. But meanwhile, he. I mean, I guess they thought it was for the autopsy or whatever. But he had the scar on his. I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, that was kind of weird. No, I know. I did a little head scratching. I was like, uh, really? Uh, well, okay, it's Detective Comics. We'll run with it. <laughs> plus, plus, in, in customs in this era, maybe they they did a lot of hand waving back then. Uh, yeah, eighty eight. Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah. Back in Gotham City, Batman confronts the ventriloquist and Scarface inside their own nightclub and warns them that their drug running will not last much longer. Scarface is furious but completely helpless as neither his attorney nor his bodyguard, Rhino, can stop a well-trained vigilante <laughs> like Batman. The attorney gets his face slammed right into his dinner. Yes! <laughs> Eat it! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> There's your new drop loaf. Free man. <laughs> it's so salty. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, and is <laughs> who proceeds to leave the club, but not before secretly planting a microtransmitter inside the puppet's head. Hmm. Very crafty, Batman. Very crafty. Two nights later, Cherry's corpse is flown back to Gotham City with the fever packed tightly inside. From his transmitter, <laughs> Batman learns that the ventriloquist and his gang intend to visit a local funeral parlor so they can remove the fever. Batman quickly invades the funeral. <laughs> that is the best when Batman's like, wait, you know, he realizes that's not, you know, the speech. And Pat he's like, wait a minute. No, no, no. He's not saying Batman. He's saying Fat Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
I, I love the part too where he's having that internal dialogue after he after he puts the transmitter in and he goes, by then you'll be spending the rest of your life behind gars. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Oh, Batman has a sense of humor after all. Oh, yeah. Uh, Batman quickly invades the funeral parlor, but accidentally inhales a dose of fever during the ensuing fight. Under the drug's influence, he savagely beats and almost kills the ventriloquist, but regains control of himself just in time. Scarface and the ventriloquist are swiftly put behind bars, with the former still defiant and the latter seeking to turn state's evidence <laughs> upon hearing this the puppet begins attacking its own master and again i know it's gotham but we would we really let him keep that ventriloquist dummy no in prison no i mean th yeah there's no way that would that would be impounded that'd be in a box somewhere exactly yeah <laughs> uh geez. Uh, all right. When thinking about the transmitter he had planted inside Scarface's head, Batman compares the situation to that of a woman whose molar filling began picking up radio broadcasts. This is a dec decades old urban legend dating back to actress and comedian Lucille Ball, but its real life possibility is dubious at best. Notably, the phenomenon was declared busted by the Mythbusters. Hmm. Interesting. It was just Batman listening to that transmitter twenty four seven. He's like, I got a mad, I had a madman screeching in my earphones. For... <laughs> Shouldn't it be out of range by now? He's on the JLA satellite. <laughs> I mean, I feel that way. All I do is listen to podcasts at work. Man, I always have madmen screeching in my ears. I thought you should get touched by a white man with cornrows. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Noel has an Osborne uh, fetish, yes. <laughs> Those boobs scare me. Those boobs scare me. <laughs> Booty looks good all the time. <laughs> boys. That's right. We're going to get more drops of him because he's going to join yeah. Charlie for Ultimate Spider Cast to talk uh, yes. that Howard the Duck Marvel team up issue. Oh, I'm excited for that one. That's going to be good. <laughs> oh my god that is the best piece of feed the best piece of feedback i ever heard on that show is uh i forget the gentleman's name wrote in a couple episodes ago and he was like yeah i used to listen he's like i listened to gamma charge i followed the host over to uh trapped in a world not the good host but one of the hosts <laughs> <laughs> that was Carl. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> that almost made me fall out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna rub that one in. Oh, we love you, Russell. Yes, Russell. <laughs> Hell, I almost fell out of my chair when I heard that the first time. Oh, so funny. And, but no, let's let's remember why we're here, Batman. That's right. <laughs> What did you think of this Sausage one, Phil? Man. <laughs> Sausage Man. If there was any chance of Ray listening to a Batman show, it's gone. <laughs> we just sunk it. We sunk all hopes of that. That's all right. But I said he might. I thought maybe he might get curious if you're since you're here, not Lilith. But uh, that, that's good. That, well, that he, he still. still might tune in. He still might. Tune he in. says he lurks sometimes. So. Hmm. Yeah. I know he listens to you know a lot you know some, our Marvel stuff. He's like sometimes I I uh, sneak into that uh, Batman stuff. I'm like okay, Let's sneak into the other side, the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Once you go bat, you never go back. No, oh, Batman, oh. my favorite character. I love Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> First, seems to talk about Batman. Favorite Batman. Character. <laughs> Batman <laughs> my favorite character. That's fantastic. I never tire of hearing that one. Go ahead, throw it in. <laughs> the hard master. Yes, the hard master. <laughs> Exciting times to be a pimp. <laughs> Yes, Ray has some of the best drops too. Oh right? yeah, oh oh, yeah. De definitely. A couple of balls yeah. down the gob. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
<laughs> just the accent sells it too. Yeah. All right. So what did all right? So what did you think, Justin, of uh, Grant Brayfogle's first outing here? I loved this. I loved it. I I really liked the art actually better in the second one than the first one. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Especially the the scene where Batman gets dosed with a fever and he sees everything as kind of like moving flames. There's yes. that one panel where he sees the Scarface and the ventriloquist just as flames. It's really cool. And then of course when he's beating the hell out of them <laughs> when he's beating the hell out of them, he looks like that as well. Like he looks like he's all made out of flames. It's really good. Yeah. What did you think, Phil? Uh, yeah, again, the art, yeah, the art's great. Uh, I mean, it's still early Brave Fogel, but I think it's even, he even refined it more from that first issue. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was funny with Batman's getting dosed with that drug. I'm like, how many times has Batman been like high on drugs? It's like here, oh, no. there's that classic Venom storyline. Venom. Yeah. And then the, the idiot the, roots. You know what? I actually covered that with Ray, the idiot roots. <laughs> Oh, my. there's been a couple of other things too. I think. I know. Yeah, I just he's maybe he's maybe that's his secret fetish. I know he's bad god, but it's like they should they should bring that up more. It's just like you know he you know he he has to fight temptation you know fight his addiction and stuff. Yeah, I'd like to see his blood in a petri dish. Probably looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Oh, he's a rich man. I'm sure he's he gets like regular blood transfusions and stuff. Oh yeah, he gets a dialysis machine. He gets it totally swapped out like Mick Jagger and. Keith Richards did back in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, I'm time for a new dose. I just went through contagion, so it's time for a, a whole new blood bank. Let's dose her up, Alfred. Oh, we oh we always joke about how he buys orphans, uh, probably for their blood too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a living blood bank. <laughs> Do you swear never to swerve from the path of justice and are and are you A B negative? <laughs> <laughs> I think they should bring fever back into a new new Batman story and have some one of the vigilantes like Jason Todd or somebody get hooked on and start going. Oh, down. there you go. Oh god, there you go. Jason Todd fighting the ventriloquist and scarfing. <laughs> Sweating his face off. <laughs> and again, this I mean they've they've stood the test of time. I mean, this easily could have been a one and done character, but I mean ventriloquist and scarface still around. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what the reaction was like at the time. Because I didn't read these when these ones came out. I had to I went back a few years later and got Yeah, me them, neither. But... but I remember like there was later on in their run, they like they showed them in prison and stuff, so yeah, they kept uh, popping up here and there. Yeah, yeah, here and there. But I wonder if, like, then they showed up in the animated series. I wonder if that kind of like put them over the top too. Hmm. Yeah, that was what ninety two, ninety three that they first appeared in that, right? I think so. And I think that was right after Nightfall, or right around Nightfall. Oh my God! Oh yeah, they were in Nightfall. <laughs> yeah, that was a big one, and then <laughs> that was also the introduction of Sako. Yes. <laughs> 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 had to help him find Scarface and police him. That that time they actually threw Scarface and police impound. Yes. Yeah. And Sako and Scarface ended up shooting each other. Yes, they got in a fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, I remember that had that little subplot had been going on for like a few issues, and I was like, "Where are they going with this?" And then when that happened, I was like, "Oh, well, I guess that's where they're going with this." <laughs> and before they can even get the scar phase of like part two, they, you know, they break into like a toy store and like scar or a ventriloquist picks up like a duck or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was a duck. Yeah, what, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a good issue too. That was the one with um, Amygdala, I think. The big yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. Because Batman takes him down. He's like, "Well, I guess I took out the, mo the more de de the more deadly of the two. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. <sighs> yeah, I know. So he <laughs> shot himself. <laughs> so funny. I think that was where they ended that too. I think. That was it for the ventriloquist for a little oh, while. Oh, in Nightfall, yeah. I don't think we, have, we yeah. saw him again until... There was a few years after that. Oh, yeah. 
But yeah, this was a great origin because they they kept things enigmatic. They didn't really explain where this guy came from, how he mm. got this obsession with this doll in the first place, or even how he ascended to this point of having kind of a criminal gang, having this drug empire under him. He, they didn't really explain any of that stuff. I know, because it's like, at this point, you're like, they didn't give his real name. It's like, is he faking? Does he really have a, you know, does he really have a condition? It's it's like, they really don't say, tell you any of that. Yeah. And I like, too, how they kept, thing, kept things ambiguous as well. It's like, well, this is Gotham, so technically that puppet could be alive. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> where do things have happened in Gotham other than this dude having this living puppet like well later on i think they do make it more ambiguous because they're like oh yeah you know scarface was created from like the old gallows they used to hang prisoners from you know so it was like infused with the you know <laughs> the souls of all these dead criminals and this <laughs> the distilled essence of evil <laughs> <laughs> I'm what is play. this child's play or something <laughs> they need to they need to go over that again and just have either like jason todd or damian wayne being like oh, yeah i don't care if he's possessed that guy still sticks his hand up his ass oh, yeah. <laughs> how, how, how dangerous am i supposed to think this guy is <laughs> All right. exactly uh i looked this up uh bu -bu i was looking at the animated series uh bu -bu -bu. Oh, his first appearance was read my lips and his last appearance was catwalk five episodes ventriloquist oh. and scarface did on the animated series yeah i remember catwalk that was a good one so that's that's not a lot of bad for a guy who you know people a lot of people probably weren't familiar with until the animated mm. series i forget who did the voice for him uh it's hold on it's said here it was uh george dzun 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 yeah hmm. i don't recognize that name hmm. but oh yes re, yes his first appearance was read my lips season one episode 59 oh wow may may uh first aired may 10th 1993 okay so yeah that was i think that was right after nightfall it was kind of like, I think it was might have kind of been in the middle because I think Nightfall mm. was 93. Yeah, because Superman, Death of Superman was 92, Nightfall was 93. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, how Jordan went ape shit in uh, uh 94. Uh <laughs> oh the 90s. Uh, sorry, Will. <laughs> <laughs> My poor co-host on the Green Lantern podcast. He let his favorite house is how Jordan. Oh, trust me, I hate Zero Hour too. We're, I could, I could bitch all day long about Zero Hour. It's like, so oh. funny. He he hates. Z he doesn't like Zero Hour because of what they did to Hal Jordan. But meanwhile, Lil's like, that's my favorite version of Hal Jordan. Oh. <laughs> well, first she was saying Parallax. Then today she was saying she likes him as the Spectre. But I was like, well, oh yeah. well, that, well, that was that wasn't bad. Yeah, that was written by Jam Dimatteo, so of course yeah. so. that wasn't bad. And, and Norm Brayful did the, did the artwork on that one. I haven't read that. We're going to be reading it coming up on the podcast. I know uh, mm -hmm. Will said he read some of it. And, uh, you know, even though he'd rather have Hal be ha uh, Green Lantern, he said he did like that series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. It was different. It was a nice to see a different rendition of the Spectre, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was more mad with Zero Hour about what they did to the Justice Society than yes. what they did to Hal Jordan, because I thought they did the Justice Society dirty. Yeah, because they just basically, like, quickly killed off, but, you know, like, half of them mm. yeah and i loved hawk and dove too like i i still think it was absolutely ludicrous to have hawk turn into this time traveling desperate villain when the original plan was to have captain adam be monarch and then uh somehow, extent. yeah but, somehow but word they, got they, out they on got captain leaked. adam yeah yeah they got leaked somehow you know in the days before the internet that somehow they got leaked and they're like oh well let's just make him hawk I was like, really? That makes no sense, and that is so stupid. But you guys do what you want. So I, I know I, I don't know. Did they just pull Hawk's name out of a hat, or did yeah. I, was, I was gonna say was that book selling, or were they just like, oh hey, let's pick a like a low seller or something? Or 
Well, that had I think that one had just canceled. Oh, so maybe they just, just gotten. Yeah, they're like, well, what do we do with these characters? War of the Gods just wrapped up, and what do we do with them? Oh, well, let's have Hawk turn into a bad guy because he was kind of there. So yeah, it'll make sense to somebody. <laughs> I kind of like but, Captain Adam too. So I didn't want Captain Adam. Though. Yeah, like, no, I, I, yeah, I didn't. But out of the two of them, like it made yeah. a lot more sense for the, for Captain Adam to turn yeah. down that path. Or it could have been like an alternate timeline version of Captain Adam that he had to fight, like his future version of his future self. That would have been much cooler. But anyway, I could complain about Zero Hour for hours. <laughs> <laughs> We'd need a whole episode just for that, Phil. Different crises. And, uh, are, are you uh, reading any of the current stuff? Any DC current stuff? I haven't read any of the Dark Crisis yet. I, I was interested by just the premise of the Justice League dying right on the onset. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't read any. What, what do you think of it so far? What's your honest opinion of it? I mean, it's okay. I mean, I mean, they've already revealed the Justice League's not dead. Like they're kind of oh, yeah. like contained in these little fantasy world things. Mm. Uh, they were whisked away at the last minute. Yes, and supposedly this was the plan all along, but now suddenly the, the titles changed to jo- Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. So, wow. Yeah. Supposedly, well, it's, it's, supposedly it's the sequel to Crisis, but on Infinite Earth, and we're like, how many? Me love like how many? How many? How many sequels have you had that had already? Yeah, we've had already two besides this one. I know it's like Infinite Crisis, not so Final Crisis, not and... so Final Crisis, <laughs> the fa- Crisis, the Farewell Tour. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crisis, the comeback tour. It won't die. <laughs> I don't know. The, the, the biggest slap in the face to me was always New 52. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they just rebooted everything. And they, it seemed like they didn't have a plan. And again, Batman and Green Lantern were selling the best. So, hey, guess what? They, they mess with those the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only New 52 that I really, really, really enjoyed was Aquaman. That was the first mm. time that I really liked Aquaman, actually. But yeah, the rest of it, I could take or leave it. <laughs> oh, oh, did you uh, do you watch uh, Harley Quinn animated series? I haven't started the new season yet. I know, oh. just, but I'm that's definitely on my list. Oh yeah, you definitely got to start the new season. I'm, oh yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. There's just so much to watch now. It's, I know. And the time to do it all. <laughs> remember back in the day we might got we might get one superhero thing a year if i know if we were lucky or maybe two a year Ooh, oh oh yeah that one, one every six months yeah but then but then you know then you have to be careful what you wish for because like look at you know then 1997 rolled around we got batman and robin uh spawn mm, uh, that's true Neil, yeah M- yeah meteor man <laughs> Oh my god. I, I love how we're gonna open that can of worms on Ray. Who's never seen <laughs> um, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear his reaction to that. It's gonna be so good. Me- uh, Meteor Man has to be seen to be believed. Yes, yes. Ray, you have to watch it. <laughs> uh so any other thoughts, Justin, or should we? Should I give you and the people their homework? Yeah, I think I think that wraps us up pretty good there. Yeah, I'd I'd like to see the drug fever return in a in a future Batman story. I think it's a cool concept. I think it would be cool to see it come back. And yeah, this is a great debut for the ventriloquist and Scarface. Fantastic. Oh, and yeah. for Alan Grant and Norm Prefolu. Oh yeah, the greats. Well, next, yeah, next episode, we're going to be covering Detective Comics 587 through 589, uh, the, the first appearance of another new villain, the Corrosive Man. Yeah, I love this one. It's one of my favorites. So they were, like, really, like, uh, really uh, knocking uh, some new villains out of the, out of this, because, like, first Vincent Quist and Scarface, and then the one after this, Lilf and I already covered it, but it was Ratcatcher. Mm-hmm. The Ratcatcher was brand new. Yeah, then... And I think you were like roll right into a corrosive man, pretty much. So, 
corrosive man and also after this um anarchy yes shortly yeah. after this and a couple of others yeah he was he was on a roll with the new villains both both him and norm were just creating them out left and right it was great uh, and then in two weeks, we'll be covering, we'll go to the one they jumped the Batman, Batman mm-hmm. 455 through 457, uh, a big Tim Drake episode and a classic rope. Yes, I love that one too, uh, uh, featuring the Scarecrow and possibly one of my favorite renditions of the Scarecrow art- artistic wise, art wise. I love I know, um, yeah. Norm Brayfogle's Scarecrow so much. And then we'll round out, we'll end the month, we'll bookend it, Batman 475 and 476 with Ventriloquist and Scarface. Yes. Coming full circle again. Yes. So I, I haven't done the reread yet. I can't remember. Maybe they will mention Fever. I'm trying to remember. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They might have got back in the drugs, but I don't know if they specifically ever got back in the Fever or not. Mm, it's probably something similar. Some, some other one. Yeah. Yeah, Scarface never seems too picky. It's just like, you know. Yeah, whatever the kids like. <laughs> oh, my God. It's um. Did you ever read the Detective uh, Comics? It's a two-parter where uh, where they break Penguin out of prison with a hypnotic trance to, you know, make him yes. like dead. That's when yes. they show Scarf, Ventriloquist and Scarface in prison, and they're sitting around, like, playing poker with, like, Rhino. That's right. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Rhino's like, I don't know what to do with Scarface. It's like, just throw everything in, dummy, and then boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That story also had Cadaver, which is yes. was, uh, shows up in the next one we're covering. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh yeah. This is that where you got that score? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a good one. <laughs> another another original villain. That's well. true. Yeah. yeah. I know. I was gonna say he never got big like some of these other ones, but uh, no. Oh yeah. I remember him but, from those first couple of years. Yeah. He was funny. He always made me laugh. Cadaver. So funny. <laughs> Just like looking for death. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessed with death. His own death, you know, of course. Such a dramatic actor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that was the uh, rumor spreading around town. He wanted to be a serious actor. I mm. want to be a serious actor. <laughs> That's an old <laughs> I heard Ezra Miller said that too. Oh, Ooh. oh some... I still can't believe they're. I mean, they they still have time to cancel that movie, but I still can't believe they're in the Ezra Miller business after they canceled Batgirl. Really? Oh, I know they should have canceled that first, the Flashpoint, and or not canceled it, but just recast it. Like exactly. Who cares, who cares about contracts? Just do it. <laughs> I mean, isn't this guy breaking laws and you know, he's, assaulting yeah, people? I mean, I'm he's sure like a cult leader. Like, I'm sure they yeah. can get out of that contract. Oh yeah, if David Koresh was in was in Flashpoint, you better believe they would have hauled that out of there and recast that. They would have CGI'd the hell out of that. Like I said, you don't have to look far. I mean, I don't know if they don't think he's a movie guy or what, but get Grant Gustin in here. He's been playing the Flash on oh, TV for. Yeah. Eight- well, he did. He just did eight full seasons. He's about to do a ninth and final season. He he has the, you know, he has. It. Where's where's your resume? Okay, here, look, Flash seasons one through nine. There you go. Yeah, exactly. And he's paid his dues. Yeah, and he's. And you never Flash, hear anything. So... You never hear anything about this guy. You never hear a bad thing. The only time yeah. you ever see it's like, oh, hey, he married his, you know, he married his wife or, or whatever, or they got a dog. Some, you know, just oh, yeah, stuff like yeah. that. You never hear nothing yeah. about this guy. Yeah, he's squeaky clean, and he would never rock the boat. So, definitely give him his own movie. He's earned it, man. And plus, it would give Rick Cosnett some work, and he's my favorite biscuit. So, yeah, <laughs> put, him, put him on the big screen, please. Yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> is, that, is that your favorite live action biscuit? Because we know we're, Namor has a place in your heart. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Rick Cosnett's my favorite live action biscuit. Oh my. <laughs> I even have an autographed uh, picture of him on my wall. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm. just the autograph. You never met him. Oh, take a picture. With oh, it's him. personalized. Oh, it's oh. personalized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're Rick Cosnett. Lil is Chris Evans and uh, Joe Manganiello. Chris Evans can get it all day, oh. every day. Well, yes, I'll, I'll echo that. Chris Evans can get it all day. <laughs> I, 
The first time I saw Chris Evans was in a little movie called Cellular with Kim Basinger and William H. Macy. And the first time I saw that man strutting down that beach, I was like, wow. <laughs> Woo. We're going to see him again. I can guarantee you that. Thank you. Thank you. I, it feels like Lilith never left. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maganello can get it. Except she's afraid of Sofia Vergara. <laughs> oh, well, that, that makes sense. I told her I'm like threesome, baby, threesome. Well, that's true. Or she could hold the camera at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> Only fans. Oh my. Uh, yeah, no, Chris Evans can get it all day. Rick, Rick Cousin is at number one, but Chris Ooh. Evans is right, right around there, right around there in the top five. Yeah. <sighs> all right, before we go, sexiest man to play Batman. Who is it? Oh, um, could be all time. Could be Adam West. Could be who? Doesn't matter. All, and of all time, who is it? The, the sexiest. Yes. I, ooh. I I I kind of like Battinson. Oh, for the, for the jawline. That jawline is out of sight. I was like, ooh, <laughs> when he when he walked when he was walking down when he was strutting down in that that upside down scene. Oh um, yeah. Coming out of the Batmobile, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to shift in my seat here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So yeah, yeah, I think Battinson wins out. I surprisingly. Uh, surprisingly. Hmm. I wasn't, yeah, I thought about it, but yeah, he's he can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I love this performance, not like you, but I love this performance. <laughs> My it must have been pretty good for you. I mean, if that uh, Nirvana playing twenty times during the movie didn't, uh, oh yeah, it. no, that didn't, that didn't, that didn't turn me off. I was, I could tune that out. I've heard Nirvana enough, so I can activate my selective hearing and tune it out when I need to. I mean, I like Nirvana, but they played the same song over and over. Oh, I know. I was like, oh, great. The fifth time. Great. Yay. We paid for this song. We're going to get our money's worth. I can feel my serotonin being leached out as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> like a time machine. Take it back. <laughs> back in the 90s. I wasn't a grunge fan. I was a techno guy. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I ditched the plaid and got out my glow sticks. <laughs> I can pretty much listen to anything. I mean, the, the one thing that bugs me is like country. It's I, I like mm. something like quick with a beat. Country is like yeah. too slow. Too slow and dreary and yeah. sad and sappy. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I don't like ballads either. Sappy piano ballads. Yeah. Turn it off. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> get out of here. All right. So. Send this man some thoughts. Send us thoughts on the next upcoming uh, episodes. Uh, email yeah, send us. in your feedback about the corrosive man and cadaver. Yes. All the upcoming issues. Hey, if you want to send feedback for 583 and 584, do it. We'll read it next time. That's right. So, yes. Yeah, so send your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can follow We Are The Knights, the Batman podcast on the, Facebook, the, <laughs> on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, fi- join the Batman fan group on Facebook now at, um, was that 1.1 thousand members? I, yeah. 1.1 or 1.2. So. I, yeah. I looked the other day. It was very, very nice. Yeah. A lot of our groups are getting up there. So <laughs> our Spider-Man's at like 3.9. So <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so uh find links to all the social medias for all the dc and marvel shows we do links to the youtube channel uh again everything we do gets an episode gets in a video interviews specials summer 69 is all up there all, all of sub september will be up there <laughs> so yes so do do like the lady says and smash that subscribe button smash it so you don't miss any of that Oh wait, I said lady. All right, uh get him out. <laughs> she's a woman, but she ain't no lady. <laughs> uh you know we love you both. 
We love you, Lilith. Uh, uh, yeah, I need some muscle and some meat. <laughs> Spread them out. <laughs> and remember, boys, wrap it up. I don't do Twinkies or toaster strudels, so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I swear, sometime, somewhere, I'm gonna just throw you two on a podcast and see it and watch the magic happen. Oh yes, it's gonna happen. I oh my to... god, I just oh, need yeah. one episode of Who Can Get It in Hollywood if you and Lilith. Oh, <laughs> I bet we could get an hour long episode out of that. Absolutely. Oh please, you could. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So. Yeah. Yes, kids. Uh, and also, most importantly, please subscribe to our Patreon. Again, one of our Patreon elite right here. Yes, join me in the Patreon elite. Along with Ray and Russell. So uh, every little bit helps, but 3 to $5 gets you uh, access to, well, early access to creator interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with that madman, Mr. DG Chichester. I got the Chichester one. chats. For quality. Bing! And of course, because Little Hellfire loves my pain, superhero movie brackets, we will find the worst superhero movie of all time. And like we were saying before, August, mm. well, August started. <laughs> we're, okay, guys, we're recording this ahead of time. I'm not telling you how the sausage is made. But uh, so, yes, <laughs> August, August started uh, the indie movies with uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen versus Sin City 2. October will. Uh, no, no, wait. Uh, September will be the fan. Yes, this month will be the Phantom and the Spirit, and then in October, because I'll demand that it's Spawn versus Meteor Man. Oh man, a string of humdingers! <laughs> oh, yeah, the whole year, man. <laughs> <sighs> so, yes, so you really want to subscribe to that Patreon or pick yourself up some Capes of Lunatics and Capes of Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Mm, get some swag, yes. So find it all at linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capes and lunatics. All right, Justin, thank you so much for helping me out. Where oh, can yes. people find you on a regular basis? Well, I also co-host Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is with my good pal Russell. And we talk about everything to do with the Incredible Hulk and the She-Hulk, including her new show coming out on Disney+, Plus, which actually by the time this episode is out will already be airing. And I also, we also co host uh, Tomes of Evil, comic book super villain podcast. And as well, by the time that this comes out, hopefully the Lost Library of Legends will be <laughs> unveiled. I know I've been saying that for months, but it's the stars are almost properly aligned for it to appear. I can feel that. <laughs> so that will be coming soon as well. Three, three different shows. And didn't you guys retool or re up or do something different with Tomes of Evil? Yeah, we're going to be actually doing a bit of a hiatus. And while the, and during the months while Tomes of Evil is on hiatus, we're going to be focusing on Hobgoblin. Mm. And we're going to be doing Hobgoblin Historia, in which we cover all of the appearances of the original Hobgoblin going back to the 80s. And amazing Spider Man. I swear, I swear that Hobgoblin's popular because, like, every uh, every November on Ultimate Spider Cast, me and Lil either do something on a Hobgoblin or a Green Goblin for a Hobgoblin, or well, either the, either Hobgobble yeah. Gobble Month or a Green Gobble Gobble Month. So <laughs> that's a good month for some Gobbler Cobbler. <laughs> gobble Gobble. <laughs> I swear, I swear, people on on Into the Night Demon Night podcast do not know this man the way we do. Sounds like a bland, Jen. I just want to sit Rebecca. I just want to sit like Rebecca down and be like, do you know who you podcast with? Right? There are many sides to the High Priest of Kanshu Ray. Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> that was just a really nice package. <laughs> Oh, I did see this. I um, the, the She Hulk. Did you see? I guess you know they've been doing six episodes uh, shows for lately. She Hulk mm -hmm. only nine episodes. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, oh, I just saw that. Like, is that real? And I just double checked. Yeah, they're they're saying nine episodes. So. Oh, good. No, I was under the impression it was going to be six as well. Good. Well, that's great. I'm happy. I hope they start making longer seasons. Yeah, that seems to be their plan over there. Either do the six or do the nine. Yeah, preferably nine. 
They're doing half a daredevil. <laughs> God, I can't wait for that. It's going to be like four and a half months straight of daredevil. Oh, man. It's going to be great. A binge a thon all for months. Although he's Keep it going up. for six months. They say he's showing up in She Hulk, so. Hmm. Guess well, I guess, well, I guess by the time this airs, we'll know. <laughs> but... Yeah, with a new costume as well. We shall see, I guess. Mm. All right. Thank you for joining us, kids. Again, yeah, come back next uh, episode for the Corrosive Man. Mm. Detective 587 through 589. Night People. Yes. One of my favorites. I'm so sad. We're never going to get any, like any Grant or Brave Fogel, new Grant or Brave Fogel again. I know. It bumps me out. But they still, they did a, a long run. So oh, yeah. It's, there's a lot to enjoy. There was a great collection that came out a few years ago of, of his stuff. I think it was hardcover. Yeah, because even like after their Batman stuff and after Nightfall, I believe, that, yeah, they did a run on like Shadow of the Bat too. For, I forget how many issues did. that was. But, uh, yeah, it was for a handful. Yeah, five or six or seven. And then there was the Anarchy Limited series. That oh, they yeah. Together too. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that with you guys if you ever cover that. Oh, I'm sure we'll cover that. All right, kids, come back next time. Join us same bat time, same bat same channel. Same bat channel. And Justin will be back. <laughs>